Hi guys, so welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to do a video about how to use the Ultimaker Cura software for 3D printing. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, download Ultimaker Cura and just press on this and then just download for free and press download for Windows or Mac or whatever you use. And I have already done that as you can see. And the second step is to add the printer that you're using. As you can see, I have entered Creality Ender 3 Pro because that's the printer that I have. And if the printer is in their inventory or in their, in Ultimakers, like you can see, this is all the printers that they have in their database. In their database, they have a bunch of different printers I can, as, that you can choose from. And I have just chosen the Creality N3 Pro. And if the, it is in their database, then you will get a 3D version of that, the print bed on your screen, as you can see, that I have right here. This is how big N3 is, and this is just to show you how it looks like before you start printing. And what you want to do when you have chosen your printer, you go here and you press what material you want to use. And I have just used PLA. It's generic PLA because I don't use anything else. Then you also choose your nozzle size. The most common is 0 0.4 and that is what I use right now. And well, after that, you want to go into here. This is your print settings and here you can choose your quality. For example, this is just how big the layers are. So you can go all the way from like, I don't know, 0.1 is quite small to all the way up to 0 0.75 because that's how big the PLA is. Or if you have a bigger nozzle, you can go all the way up to one millimeter even. But that's, that's for really fast prints, not that good looking prints. And if you want to have the thickness of your walls, you can go and change that here. I have it on three because that gives a pretty thick wall without compromising the structural integrity of the print. And this you can leave at whatever it was before. And this you don't really have to look at. I don't even know what it means, but this you don't really have to look at so, unless you're really fixated on how your prints looks. But yeah, and here you choose your infill density. It can go all the way from 1%, no, 0% actually, up to 100%. That's just how much you want to have infill on your prints. I usually go with 10% on just good looking prints and 30 to 50% on, well, 30 to 100% on uh, prints that actually are useful for me that I use as maybe uh, tables, small tables or small holders that will actually need to support some weight, then I use 30 to 100% depending on how much weight is going to put on it. And you can choose a bunch of different infill patterns and I will show you that. I'll just, as you can see, this is a Deadpool base and I will give it this doesn't need good info, 10% is enough. And lines look like, if you want to see how the lace look like, you need to first choose your infill and then slice. Because it is, this is quite big, you can obviously make it smaller. This is how big it is. It's uh, 10 times 17 by times 14 centimeters big. So as you can see, this will take 21 hours to print at 10% infill. This is how it looks inside with lines. As you can see, it prints in these diagonal lines. As you can see, that goes across like that in 10% infill density. And I'm going to make it smaller so it doesn't uh, make it 20% of that. Okay, that's a little small. This would be something that you can print that would, wouldn't take a day. Yeah, as you can see, this only takes 
four hours instead of 21 hours and yeah it still looks the same on the inside but yeah the, if you want triangles it's going to look a bit a little bit different triangles looks like this at 10 percent as you can see it's little less actually than the lines but still 10 percent and 10 percent is i think is enough for this print because it's not it's just for decoration, it's not really for structural integrity that you print this. And yeah, you can just play around with this in your settings and see what all infill patterns looks like. And the one I choose often, most often is lines because it gives the, according to me, the best uh, structural integrity. But lightning is the fat fastest and I will show you how that looks like. It's pretty much just gives you exactly enough to hold up nothing more than what's really necessary because I will show you as, you as you can see it's barely any infill in this it's just enough <laughs> so that your print will stand up actually <laughs> but this actually also uh, prints the fastest now I don't have that fast of a print speed so it only ta it still takes like four and a half hours and it also costs 63 euros 63 euro cents and yeah and down here is another important step to your 3d printing it's the print temperature that you use on the box that you actually buy your pla your abs or whatever plastic you use for 3d printing it says what temperature you need but most plas usually go between 180 to 220 degrees and I use 215 degrees Celsius because I think that gives the best best printing for me at least and I also use build plate temperature at 60 degrees because that gives a better build plate adhesion so that your 3 prints won't slide off your 3D print bed and here you can change the print speed most printers don't most cheap printers like the 3 then that like the Ender 3 don't go that fast so I usually only have it at 55 because I don't want to compromise with the quality of the print so I just keep it at 55 but you I think you can go up to 100 in print speed on the Ender 3 and still get okay results it just really depends on who you are and what kind of quality you want on your prints because as you can see now you just took off like 40 minutes more on that print just by changing the print speed but i will keep it ah, i'm actually going to slightly increase it to 60 just to make it a little bit faster and this i don't really know what it does to travel i'm sure someone can explain it on youtube but i'm not that guy if you want to know more about that, just go on YouTube and search travel and Ultimate Gear Cura and you'll probably get a good result for that, but I just keep it at whatever it was from the beginning. And here's the print cooling. This is actually quite good to have on, because otherwise maybe your print won't set right and they might just never set and be all droopy and look weird <laughs> when you make them. So I usually have that at 100% on my 3D printer. It sounds a lot, I know, but if you don't have your 3D printer in your room, this can work. But you can also change your fan speed so it isn't at 100% all the time. But I usually have it at 100% because I think it gives the best cooling for my 3D prints. And here you can also generate support and just press this and as you can see a bunch of different options come up here and i usually have used the three version because that's a little bit faster than using the normal using the normal and i use t touching build plate because i can't show you as you can see this takes a little bit longer that's because it has generated these kind of tree looking supports it's not necessary for all prints, but for prints that have arms sticking out or something like that, 
you will probably need to use some kind of support. This doesn't need support because I have printed one of these Deadpool figures and they, that did not require any support and it printed perfectly fine. But if you want to be sure that it prints fine, then you can use supports like this tree looking one. And the difference between touching build plate and everywhere is the difference is that if you choose touching build plate, then it won't give supports like that there. It won't uh, put the supports on your actual print. It will only put the supports on the build plate. Because, and that's good for when you're trying to get rid of, get off these uh, supports from the print and you don't want to damage your print. This can be quite useful to use the touching build plate, which I use. Support overhang angle. Uh, angle. This can goes between one degree and ninety degrees. But I mean, ninety degrees is pretty much no support because nothing can actually hang out beyond ninety degrees. Because then it goes back up. Because as you can see, no build plate support. But if you use 1%, it's going to be support everywhere. Every single angle that sticks out more than one degree is going to have support with a one degree overhang. So you can choose between one and 90 degrees. I usually go with around 50 degrees because those that is the range where things need support from 50 to 90 degrees. Before that, you don't really need support for most prints unless you want it to look perfect, but for me, 50 and 90 degrees is a good starting point. <laughs> As you can see, it gives support on literally everything, even the swords that are almost not <laughs> going outwards. Like as you can see, it gives support here. This doesn't need support. And yeah, you can also use build plate adhesion. You might need this for um, for prints that aren't as stable as this, that has like uh, feet that it stands on, like some figures and such, and the actual build place looks like the skirt looks like uh, this. This is just this is just how the skirt looks like. This is not really for build plate adhesion. This is more for getting gunk out of your 3D print nozzle. Because this will print all of the bad filament out here on the sides before it actually prints, starts printing this. As you can see here, it starts printing. Oh, as you can see here, it starts by printing on the outside. Three layers on the outside or three to four layers on the outside and then it starts printing the actual base for the uh, uh, your print and the raft is the most it takes out them up the most space but it's all it also gives the most amount of uh, adhesion to your build plate it also takes up the most amount of space as you can see my usable space area actually shrunk because I can't because uh, you will see as you can see this prints a whole extra layer underneath your actual print prints four five layers six layers of uh, just build plate adhesion pretty much and the supports will also be on this raft as you can see it gives you a whole base underneath your actual base. And this is the most useful pretty much for build plate adhesion because it gives a larger area for your print to stand on. So your prints won't as easily lose grip on your build plate, adhe build plate area. And a brim is pretty much like a small raft. But this doesn't really print underneath the actual 3D print 
sculpture that you're making this just prints besides it or next to it as you can see it prints next to it right like this and then starts to print your actual 3d print and dual extrusion yes is just for 3d printers that have more than one nozzle but most printers don't have that so i won't be going through this because this is just pretty much a beginner's guide for people who just want to start off with 3d printing and uh, yeah i have pretty much gone through every single setting that you actually need to use and that might be useful for you i can also show you the wall thickness as you can see i have three layer wall thickness as you can see on the edge here it, it's one to three layers before it actually generates the um, infill density on the inside right now it's at lightning so it's barely any uh, <laughs> inside infill density but yeah i have it at three layers you can change that from one to like whatever you need but three is usually pretty good one is a little bit thin as you, you will see soon as you can see one layer is a little bit too thin this feels like it's almost going to break so i usually go with three to four layers or wall line count and six is a little bit too much as you will see as you can see six lines or wall line counts is a little bit high because this is really really thick as you can see on the swords here on the back you can't even see the infill because it's six lines all around as you can see one two three four five six one two three four five six it's not just on one side it's on all sides as you can see so i usually keep it around three is the best for me but you can choose whatever you want it really depends on how sturdy you want your whole print to be and if you want to know how much things cost you go into uh, pla you press this up here and you go into material and you press manage materials then you will get to this and you can change how much you think it will cost i have chosen generic pla and i have uh, set the cost at 22 euros per 1000 grams or one kilogram so that's 22 euros for a kilogram because that's usually what price i get my plas at and he also choose that but that will be already put there so just so here you put in your price of your filament and that will give you this price right here from how much your print weighs just so that you can, in the future can know how much a print of your weighs and you can do this for every single print company that PLA or material company that makes 3d prints for 3d fuel you just press this on the here and you can change the film and cost right here that's just how you check the price so if you found this video interesting please give this video a big thumbs up and also comment down below what i have missed and i will answer that in the comments or in another video but yeah thank you for watching and bye